march past Buckingham Palace, and very seldom has even that august theatre seen a smarter parade. It was the fourth anniversary of the revival of the Women's Royal Naval Service. We proudly call them Wrens. With the Queen are the Duchess of Kent, Mrs. Lawton Matthews, the Wrens Director, the First Lord of the Admiralty and the First Sea Lord. A worthy procession to symbolise the wonderful work that women are doing for Britain today. Women in uniform, women in overalls or in ordinary everyday clothes. All women to whom our Queen pays such a warm and well-deserved tribute. I would like, first of all, to tell you just why I am speaking to you tonight. To you, my fellow countrywomen all over the world. It is not because any special occasion calls for it. It is not because I have any special message to give you. It is because there is something that deep in my heart I know ought to be told you. And probably I am the best person to do it. Work is a word that covers a very wide field. It is hard to define in a single phrase, but if you take it as meaning doing something useful that helps others, then you will see that your work, whatever it may be, is just as valuable, just as much war work, as that which is done by the bravest soldier, sailor or airman who actually meets the enemy in battle. And have you not met that enemy too? You have endured his bombs. You have helped to put out the fires that he has kindled in our homes. You have tended those he has maimed, brought strength to those he has bereaved. You have tilled our land. You have, in uniform or out of it, given help to our fighting forces and made for them those munitions without which they would be powerless. In a hundred ways, you have filled the places of the men who have gone away to fight. And coping uncomplainingly with all the tedious difficulties of wartime, you, the housewives, many doing whole time and many part-time jobs, you have kept their homes for them against the blessed day when they come back. Burying a bone, I'm ashamed of you, Rover. Prolonging the war when we all want it over. Once you've finished your bone, though it's no use to you, the factories can make from it explosives and glue, oil for the engines and animal feed, and the bone fertilizer the farmers all need. Don't forget that the bones must be dried very proper, and remember these words of old conscience, the copper. Never waste one small bone. Now, Rover, do you hear? Tons, 50,000 are wasted each year. So pick it right up like a good little bloke and put it... That's right. Understand? Okey doke <laughs> This is the Gaumont British News, presenting the truth to the free peoples of the world. It isn't often that you see Mr. Roosevelt relaxing. Like Mr. Churchill, 
This other great man has little time or inclination to take it easy while so much remains to be done. But it's good to see that the president has a little private life, or did have until the cameraman came in. The little girl is Diana, daughter of Mr. Harry Hopkins, and the dog is Mr. Roosevelt's good companion, Fowler. What's in the scrapbook? Pictures that in their day were front page news. Fowler was in on that important occasion also. In the middle of this most terrible war, it's pleasant to recall that presidents and ministers and royalty are just the same to a dog as anybody else. President or tramp, it's just the master. No one comes higher than that in any dog's esteem. A king commands no more discipline from a dog than a private soldier, and no less. In a world running with blood and madness, it helps you to keep sane. After the war, there'll be more room in the daily round for pleasant hours spent like this. This was the march of the Kenya police force on the occasion of the East African Police Cup final. Rather similar to our affair at Wembley, with one or two little differences. The two teams were presented to Lieutenant General Platt, East Africa CNC. The match was the police versus the prison warders, and a large crowd arrived to watch it, hoping they'd both lose. It seems a bit strange to be watching a football match between teams with no boots on, but we may be reduced to it ourselves before the war's over. Anyhow, they play pretty good football, and here comes a goal. There's one advantage in playing without boots. A hack on the shins is not so serious. But oh boy, oh boy, if you stub your toe. Unfortunately, our cameraman forgot to tell us who won. He merely said the favourite scored the winning goal after a quarter of an hour's extra time. In a match between policemen and warders, there's a gloomy ring about that expression, extra time. New York is going through the blackout pains that Britain went through in the first nights of blackout. New Yorkers have no blackout, just a dim out or a brown out. But they have all sorts of little gadgets for avoiding collisions. Very nice if you can get the battery. A light in the hat is said to be useful for stopping a bus. It might stop the bus, but whatever the bus driver might say about it wouldn't include the word useful. Mexico issues a challenge to the world's volcanoes by suddenly producing one in the middle of a ploughed field. It would happen after they ploughed the field. It's one more nail in the coffin of Italy's dying empire. Even the world's most famous volcano gets a rival. Mussolini better spit on Vesuvius and make it sizzle. This time of year, we begin to think of holidays and sunshine. And even the poor old harassed and browbeaten civilian is considered to be entitled to a short rest after three and a half years of going to it. So it's a nice comparison to look at the equivalent of a bank holiday on the other side of the world, South Africa's Durban, to be precise. The Navy ashore is entitled to all the ease and leisure it can get. But imagine a taxi driver having to dive for change under this lot. The MTC was founded early in 1939 with 40 members. Now it has several thousand. It has served in France and the Near East and most of all during the Great Blitz in Britain. They don't do very much drill. This squad rehearsed this show only three times, but that speaks volumes for their keenness. Breaking into quick time. Quick march. This is another contribution to the most necessary business of saving life at sea. A steel raft kept afloat by air-filled bulkheads. It floats equally well either